Good evening, everyone. This is the Finance Committee meeting. It is March 28th, 2023, and I'd like to call this meeting to order with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is held, being held remotely in accordance with the governor of Massachusetts, March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, section 20. And on June 16, 2021, the governor signed an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting is being recorded. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we have a few things on our agenda tonight. Um, we're looking to hopefully finalize the fiscal 24 budget and then start to talk about some warrant articles. But I'm going to take our agenda out of order since Betty Slade is here and she's going to talk to us about um, the article. Um, I don't know what article number it is off the top, but it is the 21. 21 thank you. <laughs> so I will, uh, Betty, I'll let you um, start off and we can talk about article 21. Okay, um, I'm Betty Slade and uh, I'm chair of the Community Preservation Committee. We have a former chair with us tonight, Tony Vera, and another member, Hugh Morton. This year we have a number of projects. We have seven projects. We usually don't have that many, but um, I think it's they're very good projects and uh, we've talked about them very carefully and hope that the town meeting uh, likes them too. So I go by um, kind of an order that I have here. The, and I sent some of you, I think most of you got the uh, couple of pages that I sent and I will go by them. So the Snell Creek uh, conservation restriction, uh, this was um, a restriction uh, that the town is purchasing. Uh, it'll protect uh, 29 acres along Snell Creek at 559 Main Road. Uh, the town will hold the restriction. Uh, and this property will be managed by the Buzzards Bay Coalition. This is their project. And there will be public access. They've asked for CPA funds of 150,000. The total project will cost 700,000. Um, we uh, had a review of their appraisal and it came out fine. We have to do that. And then we will do a, um, we will get the, get the, the uh, CR and from the CR, we'll be able to give them the funding. So first we get the CR and then the funding. So that is a uh, project, which is open space. The second project is within open space recreation. Um, the WYAA has uh, been out there. <laughs> Since about 2004, I think they were one of the first projects, and I know that Tony was somewhat involved with that one too. Um, but the first part of it was that we um, that the CPA um, funded the purchase of the the property. So they've come back to us a, a few times, um, and we thought maybe last time was the was going to be the last time when they asked for dugouts and fencing. But it turns out that um, the problem of climate change has actually caught up with them and they've had serious problems with drought. So I actually encourage them to come because this is a project we really would like to finish and it's, it's very important for the town and so many people work so hard on it. But the, this project will include the um, digging, having a two to three wellheads um, and generators to operate the pumping and in-ground uh, irrigation with submerged watering heads. The total cost is estimated at 180450 And that, they are a private group, actually, uh, because they lease the property. So we will have a uh, grant agreement with them. The town has a grant agreement with all private properties. And the town is well aware of this project. The third project is the town playground project. 
Uh, there are two major playgrounds in Westport, uh, the Bicentennial on Gifford, Gifford Road and the Annex Playground, which is here uh, near Town Hall, at the Town Hall Annex. And playgrounds um, are very popular around the state. In fact, playground, the redoing of playgrounds was not allowed under CPA, but the CPA was changed in order to allow them to be upgraded. So the Recreation Commission, the Town Recreation Commission has come in, they've done extensive research, did extensive um, uh, report to us. And at first we were kind of shocked because they were asking 350,000 for playgrounds. It turns out that's not a lot of money for playgrounds. Um, and they're planning to spend a million dollars. They're hoping to get 350,000 from CPA funds and then um, they will buy new equipment, particularly for the annex uh, playground. And then they will do what they can do with those fundings for the bicentennial playground. And they're hoping to get other private funds in order to complete all their projects. So those are our uh, open space and um, uh, recreation projects. We have one project with the, which is, um, been asked we've been asked for uh, 40 60 thousand dollars from the affordable housing trust the affordable housing trust gets most of its financing from cpa funding they are trying to find uh, other funding but to date they haven't been able to we find that uh, affordable housing is the most difficult area to work in because it's very hard to find projects to find financing for the projects and to work them out. So they have they have to have an experienced housing officer. And we've had one you've you've met before, Leonardi Arai, um, and he resigned and we couldn't, they, they were unable to find anyone else. Uh, so finally they did a kind of a, they've asked their, their actually their clerk, Bob Barbosa, who's learned something about the, uh, the, the affordable housing and he is working kind of like a housing officer, but then we have Leonardi as a consultant for things that are, are too complicated for Bob. So they've asked that for that whole project, the, the office, the legal, the, cler the clerical, and all of this, um, they've asked for $60,000 to support their efforts this year. Then just, that was, that's our only uh, affordable housing or community housing project. The town hall, we, now we go into historic preservation and it turns out that the historic preservation is all with town owned buildings this year. Uh, the first one is a project that um, Jim Hartnett uh, asked us to, uh, to look at. And as you know, the town hall is considered a historic building. It's on the, the state uh, registry of historic assets. And um, it needs work and CPA funds can be used to do that. The, and for this, for any kind of historic preservation project, the, the Westport Historical Commission weighs in. We always ask them for their recommendation and they've recommended all the projects this year. Uh, they normally do because the the people who are going to them work with them until they do uh, to, they do approve them or recommend them. So the town administrator has um, identified about a million dollars in work that needs to be done, and um, most of the funding will be come from grants. But he has asked for CPA funds of two hundred and sixty five thousand dollars to do electrical upgrades and exterior restoration of trim and other historic aspects as well as painting. So that's 265,000 for town hall preservation. <clears throat> the next project is the historic Sanford School restoration and rehabilitation. Um, CPA funds have been used for this building. It's again, a historic building. Um, it's uh, on Sanford Road, and it's been the headquarters of the American Legion and also the Vietnam veterans for many years. And uh, 
it has been protected by these groups. They, uh, the commander is Tony Vieira, who's here tonight. And um, they long wanted to do something about handicapped accessibility. And finally this year, uh, they plan to, to do a handicapped accessible entrance. A lot of work has been put forward to make that look correct, to work well, and so forth. Um, and they plan to take the two existing bathrooms and turn them into one a handicapped accessible bathroom. So they will meet the requirements of handicapped accessibilities for all public buildings by doing this. They also want to do something about the um, side door and the stairs. They plan to um, remove and rebuild that. They want to do work around the exterior of the building including the exterior itself of re-shingling. Um, and so for the total of that, it's the cost they think will cover that is $180,000. The last project is the Westport Town Farm L apartment. The town farm, most of the town farm is leased to the trustees of reservations, but not the town farm and town farm apartment and certain small buildings around it, which the town has to take care of. For many, many years, Geraldine Millam took care of that. There is a, a, a certain amount of money that they get each year uh, in rent and they use that, uh, but it certainly is just not enough. And they've had some pretty serious issues. And so um, uh, Tony Millam came to the, it, it, it's a town project, is a historical commission pro project, but Tony Millam, who uh, knows a great deal about that because he's worked with Geraldine, uh, is the project manager for that. And they've come and they've asked us if um, we could supply $36,625. And that will be for the restoration of the eave soffits, fascia, and gutters, and some replacement of uh, shingles, replacing a door and trim, restoring a two-holer outhouse, very important, and to repaint the carriage shed shingle roof and replace the water heater. So that's 36,625. The next item on the Warren article is community housing reserves. Each year, CPA funds, the, the, um, the estimated fund revenues, 10% uh, of those has to go to the three areas one community housing, one historical preservation, uh, and one recreation and um, uh, open space, which is together. That can be satisfied by either a project, by a reserve, or a combination. So we have enough funds allocated to those three categories except to community housing. So we have a, a funding of 34000 that goes into that. And that will be used next uh, in the future for, a few, for affordable housing. Administrative funds has to stay within 5% of the total funding available, and we never use this much, but we keep it. We try to do it because we do appraisals. Sometimes we do um, follow-up and we, we hire professionals to help us manage a project to look proper, to, to, be, to be handled properly, and we have clerical help from that. The last, that's 35,000. The last uh, project is budgeted reserves. Budgeted reserves is a strange um, animal. Um, it is really the residual or close to what's left in estimated fund revenues um, after you've used them for both your projects and your uh, reserves. So this year we estimate that it'll be um, uh, I think it's 34,000. I don't have it written there, do I? Uh, 34,000, I have it in it. 50,000, 50,000. Um, the reason that the state has us do that is if during the year, uh, for some reason, uh, there is a, uh, a request for a project to be at a special town meeting, then we can use those fundings to, uh, to um, 
pay for that project. Otherwise, we can't have any more projects during the year. So that's what that budgeted, budgeted reserves are. So that's my report. Thank you very much, Betty. Um, does anyone have any questions for Betty? Hugh, go ahead. Another question, uh, simply to to expand a little bit. As far as the playground is concerned, we're aware there with some people who may be interested in contributing to it, but are going to wait till after town meeting because obviously the CPC is a recommendation to town meeting and isn't real until after the meeting has taken place. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Um, Cindy, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just had a question on the um, the uh, ball fields, the Youth Athletic Association ball fields. Do you know what the total cost of that project has been? I know it's been, you oh. know, on a cost-adjusted basis. I don't really care, but I'm just about, curious. About three million dollars. Okay, and they uh, have. I haven't had the opportunity to go there. I don't have any kids in sports but is that just one field or is it multiple no fields? several fields hugh hugh is the liaison of the CBC. Oh, okay. hugh do you want to say something yeah, it's, really, it's really spectacular i'll, have to, are, I'll have to pull in there someday when the gate is open make, the gate is closed you have to make an appointment that's will turn will change after time but it will provide is now providing space for the softball team for had no place to play one of the fields is adaptable to field hockey and or soccer. You put up different goals. Mm -hmm. The reason for the irrigation is a baked out baseball diamond isn't a great thing. And, it's, and there's a special, actually there's a special blend of dirt that goes into the dirt part of the infield. As we think, if it gets too hot for too long, it bakes out and turns in basically concrete. Sure. So they need to maintain it, they found out. That's all. They built that, but this is the last elements. Things that I would not have thought. You think a fence around it is sort of a luxury. Your main, you have to have a fence if you're going to uh, have league games there. <laughs> right. Fence, you can't do it. Ridiculous. So they're going to have a fence. Right. The dugouts are not an expensive item. They're basically holes in the ground. But they need the generator because I think the I think it was something like Betty might remember better than I do two hundred fifty thousand something like that to bring an electrical line in from one seventy seven. Right, Maybe sure. Someday they will do that, but this will be let things operate because with the generator and pumps, they can pump it out of the ground and spray it around when they need to. So, so it's there are five things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are five fields. Okay, good. Thank you. They're, they're very hard work. They've been very careful with the money. There are a lot of situations where people have raised some money, it goes on for a while, and the money sort of dribbles away for this, that, and the other thing. They haven't done that. They've kept it. And some of the guys pointed out they were going to create it for their sons to play. Now it's their grandchildren. Right. <laughs> they've been dedicated. This. this spring, I think it really will be in operation. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Betty, do you have other um, projects that are lined up that you're not able to fund for the current year? So do you already have next year is already in queue? No, no, we don't. We don't have any projects in queue, but I would like to suggest that the town, you know, look at more projects for the town. Um, I think the playgrounds is excellent. The WYA, the uh, the historic buildings. I think we can be helpful to the budget, even though they're not. We're not part of the budget. I think we can be helpful. I talked about that in the past, so I'm hoping that. Uh, I know that Jim Hartnett is thinking that way now, so I suspect we'll have some projects. <laughs> next. But we put roofs on all the buildings, all the town buildings now, all of them, including a slate roof, on the town hall. Um, we've helped with septic systems. Rehabilitation for uh, for our present use is a broad category in historic preservation. And as long as the Historical Commission thinks that it meets with the Department of Interior Regulations, um, then it, we can we can do those projects. 
But no, we don't have anything coming up next year. Okay. Well, it's good. It's good that you've been able to meet the demand of the requests. So that's that's great. This sure. year, the largest number we've had. Mm -hmm. One of the virtues of having a town with old buildings is they get historic. In which case, they're eligible for rehab. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good you know, point. What, we, you know, we, we feel that what CPA does for the town is that it brings, for the private sector in particular, um, it's kind of, in the beginning, it's like seed money, and then the, the volunteers get out there. And, for example, the, the Bell Schoolhouse, I mean, a million-dollar project, we give 300000 they raise the rest. This has been so common with the with the private sector projects. Not as much with the town projects, <laughs> except playgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank good. you very much. Does anyone else have any other questions for Betty? Nope, I don't good, see thanks. Thank you. Well, Thank you. we appreciate what the committee does, and I know Thank you work you. hard and you do have lots of meetings, and um, so we appreciate your taking the dedication to to spend the money in the right way, and it's very much appreciated. So thank you, Betty, You're as welcome. always. All right, so um, that is our one discussion tonight for the warrant. So I think Jim Hartnett popped in. Did I see Jim pop in? Yes, I did. So um, the next item on the agenda is to really talk about the fiscal budget. And uh, I think we are should be in a position where we might be able to actually finalize and approve the budget. If, we, uh, if we're ready to do that, that would be helpful. Um, the changes that were made since the last version that we had, which was, I think, March 10th, we added the additional 140,000 of free cash to support the school, as we had discussed last week. Um, and then both Diamond and Bristol Aggie came in with their estimates. And so Jim helped me um, punch those numbers through. So those are uh, also in there. I'm gonna call it up to the screen. I was having a little trouble um, I'm going to turn off my um, video because I was um, having some trouble. So maybe not having my video on and while I present might be helpful. So I'm going to, and so when I, when I present, I can't really see if somebody has a question in the chat. So Cindy or somebody, if you guys can help sure. um, just flag that because I, okay. I can't see it. So, all right. So one second. Oops, one second. I don't think I have my budget up. <clears throat> um, while, while you're doing that, if I could ask Jim a quick question about the Diamond or Bristol Aggie um, assessments. Did they go up significantly? No change? Down? You're on mute, Jim. I can tell you in a minute. I'll pull it up. Oh, okay. Hmm. Standoff is going to play in that context, but Biden is doing all of that in the larger. Sue, can you mute mute your phone, Sue? Yeah, I can. I was just going to say I do know on Bristol Aggie, it's uh, student based, so it does change yearly, also based on the number of students enrolled. So, so I'm looking at the um, spreadsheet now. School choice tuition actually went down, it was 571 last year, it went down to 541. So that's kind of leveled out. This is students mainly going to Dartmouth High School. Um, and I think we're pretty much getting like 20 kids per year now roughly. And so that, that looks like it's it's leveling out and not increasing as it has been over the last six years. Um, charter school tuition went up $160,000. No, 260,000. $160,000, and I will check 
time in Bristol Haggy. So diamond assessment went up uh, from 1.745 to 1.89, so it went up $150,000. And then the Bristol Aggie went up $33,000. Great. Does that answer your question, Cindy? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I just wanted great. to know what the difference was. So that came out of... We use that out of the additional free cash to balance the budget. Karen? We had my estimate, it actually, I think my estimate for the um, diamond was 1.9, so we came in just under that. But the oh, okay. uh, Bristol Aggie was about oh, $25,000 more. So, that, yes, that came from okay. somewhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I it came from somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, it did come from somewhere. <laughs> I think it came from um, still within the fifty-four, the forty-six percent oh. from okay. the additional state. Right. Yeah. Okay. So not free, not free cash. We still had the uh, some additional funds left over from the increase in the. I got it. Okay. Yep. So just to um, I'm having trouble on my screen here. So the free cash. Um, where it stands now, um, the what's in the budget is right here. So it's five hundred and five hundred thousand two five two to supplement the school, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to pay down the uh, principal part and a portion of the principal break, uh, pay down of the campground, and then uh, this is a change from the version I did send to you today. I had 100000 in there, so it's now 50000 which was the sick leave, uh, funding the sick leave buyout, and then 200000 to the stabilization fund, so that would use the whole, whole amount out. So when I come back... <clears throat> When it comes time to discuss the wage the wage study, in all honesty, I'm I'm thinking about adding an additional five thousand in there to make sure that we have enough to have them review the personnel bylaws as well. So that's going to mess up your math. Okay, it's keep, so, uh, it'll keep stabilization from going a nice round number of two hundred to right. Like, we'll what, have to get to the one ninety five. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the numbers that uh, were presented, so as you can see here, the free cash is 700252 And so that's a change, again, from what I sent to you earlier today. It was $50,000 difference because I uh, missed that that we had to un change that number uh, in there. So I reduced the expense, and then I reduced the free cash for it. Um, so everything else is uh, what we have seen, so no other changes. And where I changed it, I'll let, I'm going to show you where I changed it from the version that you all had earlier. This number here was a hundred was fifty thousand dollars higher, so now it's seventy thousand. So to use the free cash, so I reduced again. I reduced the free cash in revenue, and then reduced the expense here by fifty thousand. To leave fifty thousand to be uh, funded. Does anyone have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns on this budget? Uh, you, you, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, not really any of those, but I'm assuming that the diamond assessment is separate that we've been deal dealt with is not part of this budget because it is hopefully going to be excluded debt, right? Um, so, oh, go ahead. Jim's here. Go ahead, Jim. We had originally budgeted 120,000 as part of our budget. We were able to reduce that down for 57,306. So that is part of the budget. So if the diamond exclusion gets approved um, next week or the week after, there'll be an additional $57,000 excess in the budget. Okay. Thank you.
any other hands or any any other questions on the budget? Does if not, does everyone feel um, comfortable at this point to um, move to to approve this budget? Mm -hmm. Great. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, the budget as presented for fiscal year twenty four. I will second that. Terrific. One second. I will. Uh, I'm trying to close my screen so I can come back. Great. Then I uh, will will make a motion for a roll call. So Cindy Brown, aye. Hugh Morton, Hugh Morton, aye. Buzzy Barron, aye. Gary, yes. Uh, Zach, aye. And did I miss anybody? Yourself. Just myself. So Karen Rouse, I <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I thought I was one short. So thank you very much. Okay. So um, from here, I'll I'll um, start to put the numbers into the financial report, uh, the 24 page report that I had done last year. So I'll start to get these numbers in there, and then I will present a draft of that as um, soon as I get the numbers through. So, which will hopefully be in a week or so. So this way we can finalize that and, and get that published out, out for people. So um, great. Okay, so the next item to talk about is really where we stand with the warrant. So Jim, while you're here, can you maybe let us know when, when you anticipate the warrant would be finalized with numbers so we can um, then proceed and vote on the rest of rest of the warrant articles. Yeah, I'm hoping by Monday um, we should be we should be there. We're, we're getting the final numbers just on some of the transfers from departments. Those we put into the warrant today, um, we're just verifying that there's no outstanding bills from prior years. And um, you know, with the budget numbers that you approved tonight, we can add that to the. Uh, that uh, article five and we should be pretty close the only uh, other article is article six the override but i think we're there um, yeah so we should pretty much have all of it by next week beginning of next week okay that'd be great because then um then we can proceed and vote through um is can we talk a little bit about i i hadn't seen i hadn't noticed um maybe i got myself confused that so there's an article 26 which is um to appropriate two hundred thousand for a feasibility study and project manager to evaluate municipal buildings and the use of the old high school is that was that on here before did i miss that so, so the article was on it was a placeholder um, oh. this was coming from the long-term building committee they wanted to pose the question whether or not we should keep the high school you know and use it for municipal uses so um the board of selectmen I discussed it with them, kind of posed the question this way. So if, they, if there is interest in keeping it as a municipal building, uh, we're going to need some funds to evaluate that further to make sure it's feasible. Uh, so similar to what we've done with the, you know, with the new high school, you do the feasibility study first. Um, this wouldn't allow for schematic design, but it would get uh, fine tune the numbers for that building and also the town hall, the annex council on aging and um, school administration offices and they you know my thought is they would look at a number of different things right they would look at the feasibility of going up to the old high school they would also um, look to see if it was you know an option would be to tear the old high school down and build a new municipal complex there um, would that actually be cheaper than remodeling the existing building i don't know but it's been discussed and I get the third option is, you know, what happens if we don't use the high school and we use our existing buildings? What is, what's the cost going to be over time to bring those up to standards? I, the thought is, or at least my thought is, when when the number the two hundred thousand was put in there, it kind of actually asks a question, and people have to make a decision. You know, if uh, if you want to move forward, this is going to cost some money to start, and uh, it's probably going to cost a lot more money going forward maybe it's beneficial maybe it's not but this would be the first step so are you anticipating this article would then open it up to questions at, at the floor on what people think about the bill about the 
I know I know one of the select board members was wanted to put something on the warrant to discuss. Is that is that on the warrant or is that not something that's on the warrant? That has been revised so it's included in this article. Okay. So this would be the opportunity if someone wanted to speak about the old high school and, and give opinions that you'd have a public forum forum to really gauge that under this article, right? Yeah, I think you know the moderator is going to control the right control the speeches, but um, I, I think it's open enough where people can at least give their opinion as to whether or not they want to fund two hundred thousand to um, look at options for the building, or mm -hmm. if they just feel that the building isn't worth it and we should go another direction. Okay, um, I had a question on the. Um, Article 23, which is the municipal light plant. So I remember last year it was on the warrant and it was described to us as a two step process. Last year was step one for a vote, and then which we, we nothing would bind us at that time. So now we're on the second question. Is is any is anybody doing a presentation to the select board? I mean I don't know what the second article is doing and if we need to, you know, do to have a presentation on this. I'm just not clear on what the second article is doing. You know, I, I think I'd defer to Shauna on this. Okay. Um, there has been a committee and uh, Keith Novo and David Cole have been working on this quite a bit. Um, I don't think this requires us to do it. It just allows us to take the next step if we want to. Um, but um, I'm sure they will give some type of an explanation or small presentation as to what it's about. Okay. Okay. Um, I had, and I know this was an article that I had requested of you, um, which was article 28, was looking at our uh, the deadlines that are in the bylaws. And um, after I think through it a little bit more, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe asking to maybe we withdraw it. So the, um, the, the current bylaw, just to remind everybody, has February 20th is the date that the select board has to give the finance committee its budget recommendations. And then March 10th is the date uh, that the select board uh, finalizes the, the warrant for us and, and sends that over to us. And then even preceding that, sorry, I think January 30th is the date that the Capital Improvement Committee is supposed to make its recommendations. So by design, conceptually, that makes sense to me, those deadlines. Um, I think, and I, I, in part, I'm concerned for you, Jim, having all the deadlines all at the same time where probably it coming from you in stages, getting through the capital improvement at January 31st, getting that off your plate, having the budget done. You know, we all kind of respond to deadlines and I just get really concerned if all the deadlines become March 10th. Um, and then we're we're waiting for a lot of, info, as the finance committee is waiting for a tremendous amount of, that, of information and it may not get to us before March 10th. And I know this current select board um, and the finance committee work very well together. And I just get concerned about future committees um, and having, you know, we have a loose agreement and we get things as quick as possible, but I get concerned that, that this may not always be the case. And I'm grateful and thankful for the relationship that we have with the select board. Um, so I just, I just get concerned uh, for those reasons to maybe it, it makes sense to not, not do this at this time. And I know it was my request to you, Jim, so. Okay. I, I'm okay with that. In fact, Steve Forbes, the moderator, had questioned the two articles because they came in kind of late. And um, I think he would have liked to see it put on next year as opposed to this year. Okay. So I, I could discuss, you know, I could just formalize it with the Board of Selectmen on Monday night. But if that's Great. the will of the committee, I don't see an issue with that. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it, we hadn't really, as a full committee, really discussed too much of it, on, you know. Um, but that's just my opinion. I, I, in one sense, oh, I see lots of hands up. Sorry, I didn't even see that. <laughs> um, go ahead, Cindy. Uh, just getting back, I should have brought this up when we were talking about the budget. Jim, you were away last week and there were some 
rather significant uh, plumbing issues that took place at the annex last week. Um, do you feel that you have sufficient funds in the budget next year, for, starting July 1, to take care of some things over at the annex? I mean, are there other things that need to be dealt with? I don't, I don't know how costly the incident was last week. It, sound, it sounded like it was going to be pretty costly. Yeah, I don't have all the bills in yet. The, the one bill I have wasn't too bad. It was for snaking the lines. And um, we, did, we did put a little bit of extra money in the expense accounts uh, for next year. Um, so I think we're OK. You, you never know what kind of expenses you're going to get in an older building. But I'm OK with what we have right now. OK, so there was no recommendation that some major plumbing issues had to be dealt with. Good, no. OK, good. That was my only question. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. You have your hand up. Um, my question is for Jim. Did we have quite concerned. I thought Oops, Jim sorry. talking about the feasibility of uh, moving the town stuff into the town uh, old high school. But I was reassured as he went on and talked about looking at all the various possibilities. That's fine. But I was concerned to start with that it would be a foregone conclusion that the analysis would be for using it at Fury the Town. Second point was I think the lighting one has to do with fiber optics. Jim will be able to read it. I was very concerned last year when this came up that there was a desire to put the town into the electrical supply business, which I thought would be insane. But it isn't, as I understand it. It has to do with a statute that does, doesn't really apply, but it deals with fiber optics for this and that. But I'd ask Jim to confirm that, in which case it's perfectly sensible. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to confirm it. Then I I don't know all the details of this. Um, so okay. I'd like to get that. I, I can check and get that to you. I will email exactly. it out to you. If, that's, if it's an idea of going into the electric light business, that's crazy. But we'll I'm deal with that. We know what we're doing. Anybody? It's Karen, I'm I don't care about that. If, OK, go ahead, Betty. With the website. Uh, all about this, and there will be a presentation at town meeting. I'll send you all the link for the website. You can take a look at it. Okay, Great. what's going on? Okay. Yep. So thank you. This it may require uh, for us to have a presentation on it, so this way we can make a recommendation on okay. the article. So, uh, but thank you. So we'll um, we'll we'll touch. We'll touch base with the select board. It sounds like Shauna and Keith might be able to provide us a presentation to kind of walk us through it too. But but if you can definitely provide us the website, this way we can have some information that we can absorb it too. So thank you. Cindy, did you, so your article 25 for the personnel board, you're, are you thinking, oops, I'm sorry, Susan, once, <laughs> Let me hold back my question. Yes. Susan, let, go ahead. Let, let Susan go. My question Susan is real quick. My, um, Jim, what was the um, funding source on the 200000 for the uh, study for the high school? Was that for borrowing or? It would be free other? cash. Free cash. Okay, thanks. All right. So, Cindy, so Article 25, you were talking about maybe the 30000 yeah, that I, you know, I'm I'm a little bit concerned that given the scope that, um, you know, the, I was only able to get kind of a rough oral estimate of, um, given the number of employees that we have, uh, given our current bylaws, that you know the the estimate would be around thirty thousand. Uh, I I I don't want to if if we're going to have this done, I'd like to get it done. Uh, including a review of our personnel bylaws. The genesis of this um, for the for the other members, Gary's also a member of the personnel board, and he can tell you that for many years he's been trying to get a study like this um, done. We we had an an issue that came up at the personnel board recently that really um, put in a nutshell the need to have. A little bit more clarity uh, regarding um, uh, job descriptions and pay rates because we've got pay rates kind of all over the place it's very difficult to match up position to position um, as to what the differences are and what the similarities are sometimes 
there's so many you know part-time boards and and different um, committees and boards and departments that have different roles and uh, you know the personnel board comes in and we oversee that group of um, employees that are non-union which also includes you know management and administration so you know they're not covered by a union so it's not just uh, part-time people it also includes the full-time uh, managerial and administrative staff that um, also oversee uh, many of these departments and so it, over the years it's kind of become a little bit out of whack as far as either the job descriptions haven't been updated and we as the personnel board are cannot be employees of the town we're not we cannot have a paid position in the town we're not on the floor you know we're not in town hall we're not in these departments to really have a good feel for uh, what what the differences and similarities are in some of these positions. So I think it's um, it's really become very important for a sense of equity amongst employees and for everyone to to feel that they're getting a an unbiased view of what the real pay rate should be to have this a town wide. Uh, this does not include schools, um, town-wide uh, employee survey or assessment of job descriptions and pay rates. So we'll know, you know, is the highway department, you know, the lack of, of personnel there, is it because of the pay? I think we all pretty are pretty sure that it is. Well, how, how far out of range are we relative to other cities and towns that are paying? Same thing with, um, you know, any of the support staff in any of the departments. Uh, are they being paid? We've seen people shift from school to town hall and then even within town hall going to a different department because the pay rate there is better than it is in the department that they're in. Well, we need to kind of get a good grip on that. And the personnel board is kind of flying blind when these positions come before us and um, you know we're getting the view of just that department trying to defend why that job is so important to them and not having a good scope of how it relates to other similar um, positions. So that's kind of my long-winded answer as to why it's really, um, uh, it, it's become time that we get a good baseline and know where we are at this point in time. Um, you know, maybe at the end of the day, it's going to end up costing a little bit more salary wise but if that gets us to keep people uh or to even attract people here for um for you know good positions and good employees then you know so be it um gary i don't know if you had anything else you wanted to um uh add to that uh, the town of dartmouth had a similar um uh a similar survey done uh and the the company that i spoke spoke to uh which is called um hr.gov hr hr gov hr, uh, gov, gov HR. Gov HR right yeah. um and they had done this uh, the same survey in dartmouth they they've done somerset they've done duxbury they've done many of the communities around here so they actually already have a pretty good um database of positions and salaries of uh, of other towns so hopefully that will get us off to a good start gary you have anything else you want to add uh no i think I think that was a good synopsis. I, you know, um, COVID didn't help this um, right. progression of people moving from town to town, and uh, you know the competitiveness of this market right now. Um, municipalities are not immune to that. So you know, we we at least should have a study that says, okay, are we in the range? Do we have? We don't have steps and 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 grades. Should we have that? Should we develop something like that? You know, and then down the line make good job descriptions that morph into what these scales are so that we can not only keep our employees but attract employees um you know the one-offs of going to the, the personnel board and saying okay well you know uh, this person should be paid x and then it just it's a snowball effect everybody's you know then everybody's going to want to go to the personnel board so i think this is this is a long time coming i think the town needs it it's been decades probably since the last one was done i know nicole had said Gave us a date, but um, I'm happy to see that uh, we're moving forward with it, potentially moving forward with it. 
So just to just to wrap this up, so are, are you are you both suggesting a different amount to provide to the select board to change the warrant or? Oh, well, we have it in at twenty five, and we're recommending we have, in, we have it in at thirty. And I was thinking about pushing it to thirty five. Uh, did we get any cost estimates from them? Uh, I did. You know, she she said that it would be you know around thirty thousand twenty seven to thirty, depending on how much it was. But that did not include the personnel bylaws. I would say that I, I, this is only my recommendation. We leave it at thirty, or we leave it at whatever amount it is now, and then if it comes in a more a little bit more, we can always do a line item transfer. Yeah. I mean, okay, then that's if, fine. If it's like three or five, I mean, we're not talking a lot of a lot of money. So right, right, right. right. Then that's fine. That's fine with me. So yeah. Jim, okay, that's great. So Jim, just a quick, um, just I'm just looking at the calendar. So if you are gonna, f when when does the warrant need to be finalized to to be printed? What's it needs the to be date? posted 14 days prior to the meeting. So, so that's that the second, the 18th. So we'd like to get it out by the 14th of April, the latest. So if we got it out the 14th of April, that means on we the finance committee on April 11th would need to. Uh, that's the latest date that we could have to vote for everything. Yes. But we have to get our we have to get the wording in for all of the motions. So next so next Tuesday is the fourth, and we may not have the final warrant from the select board, right? So we, we I, I think you will. You think we will? Okay. Yes. Yes. So we should plan on the next week, we should try to vote on as many articles as we can next week. Um, and then if something comes up and we can't, then we've got one more week if we needed a little more information on something. And, and we are working on the, the uh, motions now as well as we'll, we'll put blank votes in there for the finance committee. So okay, we can fill it in fairly quickly after. Okay. Good. Good. Great. Okay. So the biggest warrant um, is the override warrant, right? <laughs> um, you you missed our, our meeting last week, Jim. Um, I did watch. <laughs> you did watch. Oh, you did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not that night, but after that. So um, I guess I guess when Monday comes, the select board will determine if, if they're keeping the million 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 in bringing it in over three years and then doing the 54 percent split or 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 what so that i know there was some some discussion lots of opinions but uh it's ultimately for your decision to make um my so my only so the question i i think i have on the town side budget numbers i think there was a little tweaking that you were still going to do a little bit because I think you, in your initial estimate, you were putting some money to the overlay reserve, but we've since taken care of that now on the fiscal 24 budget. So I don't know if you're going to change your budgeted dollars there. Yeah, I, th I think that should get moved. Um, yeah. I, I think that should get moved. Uh, we did get the police arbitration came in Friday. I just got a copy of it today. Um, it's a little higher than we were hoping, but pretty close. So um, we're working on those numbers right now. So that may need to be adjusted slightly as well. Okay. Um, and I, I'm hoping we'll have that for, that could be the only thing that could really delay us a bit. Those retroactive pays with shift differentials over time details um, is, is not an easy task. Right. And then the second piece um, that we talked about was um, trying to get some information on the school side, what, you know, how they would use those funds. Because um, we have, you know, right now you're allocating dollars to them, but there's no level of detail on, on how that those funds would be used. Karen, I had a question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, where where do we stand with the because it was after that meeting or was the meeting uh, it, it occurred on that day where is the school resource officer coming from now so we know now that there's going to be one in place for the balance of the school year but as of right now there is not one funded for the short one 
for next year. So do we just stay, are we just standing on that, that they will, they being the school will come up with the funding for that if they choose the police department is, has pulled their, one of the school resource, resource officers away. The school obviously wants to retain that, but we, we don't know where that's coming from, correct? So, so right now for this year, um, police department is going to start picking up some of the costs. We'll probably have a transfer at town meeting to cover the balance. Uh, he's going to put detail offices at the school for the next um, three months. Um, and it, this is mainly, it's both a funding and a staffing issue. Um, he has a couple of offices that are on uh, in the military and on military leave. And um, I think there's one or two um, long-term absences due to injuries. Um, so it, it, the main reason for pulling it at this time was for staffing as opposed to um, funding. But in order to cover the funding for details, we need to come up with additional funds for that. This um, Next year, um, as part of the Board of Selectmen's on the town side, we did include an, an item in there for additional police officer. And I think it said slash SRO officer. Um, okay, so, so that's, been, that's been addressed for next year. Yes. Okay. All right. If the if the override goes through, oh, if yeah. it doesn't, so, right. mm. if it doesn't go through, um, I, I think the police department will try to get an SRO officer over there, but it depends on staffing levels and um, if people are on leave and, and injured. Right, and if, if I remember correctly, the SRO that's in the override budget is coming out of the town side funds, right? That's correct. Right. Jim, are you going to put a presentation together for town meeting to discuss the to do a presentation on the override? What's who's who's doing what? That's a good question. I can check with the board and see how they they want to handle it. Yeah. It's not an override. Oh, Betty's got a question. Go ahead, Betty. Am I allowed to talk? I, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. No, you're you're the general public. Everybody's allowed to talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, the town meeting isn't an override. It's just a budget. So we, I don't know if we should be calling it the override. It's a, it's a budget in case an override appears, and it won't appear unless the board of the selectmen vote for it uh, after the town meeting, and then. Uh, it will be put on to a special election. So as people who are trying to explain this to people outside, I'm trying to use the same terminology. I mean, we get so many questions about that. So it's not an override at the town meeting. That's correct. You're okay. right. We should be more careful yeah. with our right. So it's an appropriation uh, night, of the budget. Long discussion about that. I not you know and and this, you don't understand. Oh yes, I do. And oh. It was quite hard. Right. So it's an appropriation of the budget. And then a, a subsequent election would then be that. But so yes. So I'll, I'll rephrase. So so there should be some sort of presentation on explaining exactly that, Betty, what the yes. steps are I agree. and and what the proposed appropriation would be and what it would be used for. And um, very clearly trying to explain that this does not solve the towns, all the towns' problems, right? So especially if the select board elects to do the one million a year increments for three years, then that's not going to be generating a tremendous amount of dollars coming in. So there's still going to be services that are um, that are on hold. So I think that's very important to for people to understand because you know if if an if the budget gets appropriated at town meeting and then if subsequently the election it the prop two and a half gets approved then and then later down the road the town still says oh well we can't do this because we don't have enough positions I, it just needs to be clear that that that's the intent that it's not like 
oh, you've got the override and now you start still saying you can't do this. What what are you doing? Right. So it's got to be clear what the override is going to cover and what the override still will not cover. So what is still short? So all those things are important, in my view, in a presentation of some sort. May I speak? Yes, yeah, sure. If we, especially if we do it in three tranches. Right. You really need to have three budgets for the next three years. People, people out there are asking, what are you? What is this going to be spent on? You do your best to do an estimate of what the budgets are going to be, and you very clearly tell people this doesn't solve all these issues. There's still going to be these cuts. There will be in the future another mm -hmm. override, a need for another override. I mean, if you're going to tell the truth, that's the way it's going to be. Right. Uh, it's not enough money. Yeah. And I mean, it, yeah. And what the school, how the school handles it. I, to us, that's key. How we haven't seen what the school is going to spend the override on, but they don't know yet if it's three years or what. So that, in order to sell this, we just have to have the full information, and so, then we don't have much time. Mm -hmm. So I think the board of selectmen have already voted to do the three years, a million each year, um, right. at, a, at a meeting a few months ago. So unless that changes, that is the the plan going forward. Um, can certainly confirm what. A change on Monday night, but I think that's that's the plan. Unless there's you know recommendations from other committees, school committee, or finance committee, or you know whoever you know, the board to reconsider and look at a different option. Right, and and you know Shauna did at last week's joint meeting did indicate that if anybody had any suggestions on the change to 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 you know to get back to her. So um, if this if again if the school committee um, doesn't feel that the current um, plan could meet their needs, then they need to communicate that pretty quickly to the select board. I mean, I've, you know, we've spoken and I've given my opinion on, on things, but I'll support whatever the select board um, puts in, in front. So, um, so whatever it is, 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 is better than what we have now. Uh, Hugh, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just think I had to think long and hard about the whole situation. If there were a raid on the town side of the budget, we've had the 5446 for a long time. And if that were to be changed overnight, I think that would cause real problems. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I assume the select would know that. At least I hope so. And I think the current plan of the select board is to retain the 54% split in this, the, the version that's been, um, been been discussed for a couple of months. Does anyone else have any other comments on the override or... Um, I see somebody's hand. Whose hand is up? Betty. Betty, Betty. Go ahead, Betty. Not on the override, but the warrant. Uh, I'm yeah. concerned about Article 26. Um, I listened. I, I saw how they changed the, the um, wording of that article. My, and I, the question I've had all along is, it's very hard to present this to people if there's no data if there's no cost. And my understanding is, I heard uh, Brian Valcourt say that they would do a presentation and give the cost. The, they would give what they think the, the building would sell for, what the cost of the alternative uses as it would be, and how that would be financed. Otherwise, I just don't know how we make a decision. I wouldn't know what to say to tell the truth because I don't know, you know, what it is that's being, um, mm -hmm. that's being, that's really out there that's feasible. The feasibility is very important. I'm, I'm on that committee, Karen. Well, I think that's the whole point of the article that the, the data that 
that that committee has received yeah. um, was, um, although it was highly detailed, uh, it certainly wasn't in the form of a feasibility study. I mean, this was just purely a, this is how much per square foot it would cost to renovate it, to bring the whole building up to code. There was, there was never no, um, there was, there was never any, uh, you know, partial modification or you could use, it, you know, you really need a feasibility study for someone to come in and study the town, the town's uses of their buildings and how it would apply to this building. What we, what we as a committee, the long-term building committee had was merely a dollars and cents cost per square foot for the whole thing, regardless of, you know, what the uses were going to be, more or less. I mean, there was no separation of, well, if you did, you know, Council on Aging, or if you did, you know, some highway department here, you did. So there, there was no real study showing the current use of our town buildings. And have we maxed it out? Have we maxed out the, the useful life of some of them? Have we maxed out the space in some of them? So, you know, there's certainly firms that specialize in this type of issue. And this is a very big, I think this is a very pivotal decision for the town yeah, yeah. to determine whether or not they want to let go. We will never have 60 acres of land again. You know, once that property is sold, the town will never have that kind of property again. So let's just be darn sure that we're ready to get rid of it. You know, should it be used for housing? Should it be used for municipal offices? Is there a market um, for some other school to come in, you know, to, to do that? I just saw there was a town in, uh, in Rhode Island that finally sold uh, an, old, um, an old school building that had been vacant for 15 years. Uh, and they did, they ended up doing it for low income housing, but it took them 15 years to find someone to come in and, you know, they ended up selling it for a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. So, you know, we got an estimate of what it could be worth. I'll tell you, I don't think anybody's going to pay $10 million for that piece of property. I mean, there's no way. So, you know, there's, there's just, it, we need an independent evaluation once again of what our true possibilities are and how much that could potentially cost. Right now, what we have are just a bunch of estimates of what a total total renovation would be on a cost per square foot. They were very detailed. I mean, very, very detailed. It has to be brought up to code, but certainly not enough that the building committees felt that we could put together presentation on because there was a lot of information we didn't know. Um, so it, it was, um, uh, I, I don't think the committee was very well organized um, overall. So there were a lot of opinions and this is where we ended up. Thanks, Cindy. Uh, Hugh, you have your hand up. Yeah, I don't want to cast aside Cindy's statistics about what could be done with the costs, but I would throw out the original so-called study, which had no connection with reality. It was simply a dimensional analysis of what might be done with the structure with no thought about cost. Insane. The least cost is being thought about here. And that's the important thing. So an idea of what could be done, it would be sense to do, I guess maybe is a better way to do it because you can do anything you want as long as you've got enough money to do it. What would make sense to do? I am very cautious about the idea of consolidating everything in the high school because now you have a whole bunch of other obsolete buildings. However, the analysis for this and that, I'm also very concerned the town gets into a business that is a description for disaster to start with. However, I don't mean to prejudge what is an analysis feasibility study that cross the I's and cross the T's and has a reasonable projection of what the expenses would be. I don't take seriously any market value. It's a matter of usage and investment and operating expense. If we keep it, there's no cash. It's a matter of usage. It gets enough right. set. Right.
Well, you know, I agree. We've got to move in a direction and we've been stagnant on this for a long time. So I think, you know, it makes sense to get the real data. So a decision supported by financial facts can be made and not just by the heart. Um, yeah, the other thing I'd add, Karen, I'll ask anybody, excuse me, every, not everybody, but a number of people have ideas how they would like to use it. And they're interested in sponsoring a study which will justify their use, but excluding consideration of other things because they want to have it for their use. That's what we need to avoid. And that's what I think Jim is talking about. So I, I go back into my lair, I guess. Yeah. Pros and cons, right? Um, does anyone else have any other comments on the warrant? No. Okay. Well, Jim, we look forward to seeing a nearly final warrant next week <laughs> so we can um, vote on as many as we can. And then uh, so this way we're not pressed up against the deadline. Sounds great. I appreciate you being here, Jim. Thank you. All right. So uh, I think the next item on the agenda was to, um, I think we have two sets of minutes to approve. So we have the minutes of March 14th, 2023. If someone would like to make a motion on those. So moved to approve so, the minutes. Yes, minutes. to approve the minutes. Okay. And a second. second. Thank you. I will do a roll call. Hugh Morton. Hugh Morton, aye. Cindy Brown. Aye. Fuzzy Barron. Aye. Gary. Yes. Zach. Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. And then the next minutes are the minutes of March 22nd, 2023. If Did, we ditto on the motion. Motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Second. Thank Second. you. I will do a roll call. Hugh Morton. Hugh Morton, aye. Cindy Brown. Aye. Zach. Aye. Gary. Yes. Buzzy. Aye. And Hugh. Did I do Hugh? Yes, I did. I seem lost. And Karen, aye. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, if no other topics, I think uh, meeting schedule, we definitely want to meet next week and uh, do what we can to get through as many Warren articles as we can. And um, that's it. Okay, next learned. week, we'll just, we'll just start from the top and just go through them all, right? Yeah, we'll just go through as many, whatever ones are finalized, let's just, we'll plow through them and just try to get through whatever we can. Okay, I guess, I guess I'm still a little bit confused as to which articles are not finalized by the select board. Well, there's a lot of them that have no numbers in them. Okay. So they're not finalized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still a shell. So the article itself is sitting there, but there's no dollar amounts in there. So we can't vote on anything. Okay. All right. That's done. So there's like the transfers, for example. So... Oh yeah, those those right. items, right, right. We yeah. need we need the numbers in there so we can actually vote right. on something. So they are so yeah, so they are fun. The Warren articles in uh, as a shell are finalized, but we need the final details. Um, so I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> Yee, roll call. Hugh. Hugh Morton. I. Cindy. Uh, Cindy Brown, aye. Hi there, Buzzy. Buzzy, you're back in Westport, Buzzy. I can tell. Only for a couple of days, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Okay, you're in but familiar aren't you territory. Clever. Aren't you clever. <laughs> uh, Buzzy Barron in Westport, aye. All right, Gary. <laughs> yes. Zach. Aye. Actually, I have one more thing before you adjourn. Oh, okay. Oops. Okay, so we know that uh, March 30th is the date for ending the remote meetings. Um, uh, the, la the latest, I, I checked today, the Mass Municipal Association is all over this. Uh, both the, ho the Massachusetts House and Senate have approved a bill that includes the extension to um, the end of March of 2025. Uh, to extend the remote 
the governor is very much aware that there are a couple of things in this bill that uh, have expiration dates coming up. So I will watch it closely. It, it appears that she is due to sign it. The full bill is, is available ready for her to sign. Uh, I'm sure that her office is just reviewing all the things on it because uh, there are several things attached to it. Um, so if they don't sign it, technically we could not meet remotely next week. So I will let you know by posting date, hopefully, well, that will be Friday, right? It's the posting date. Right. So we'll until Friday. Yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that that will be done by then. I myself, am, I'm going out of town for the next couple of days, but you know, it's just a quick search on my phone to see if, if the governor is, has, um, has signed that, but um, so we'll see. So technically we, we should not meet remotely next week if that, if that has not been approved. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So well, you, can, I, you can finish your roll call. I'm all sorry. Right, I, didn't so, want you, I didn't want everybody to disperse because that was on my mind and I forgot. All right. It. I was the last one on the roll call. So okay. I have a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.